right, so next chapter is chapter 8. And chapter 8 is elimination reaction. So if you remember last time, we actually talked about a little bit about elimination reactions. So elimination is losing a group from the molecule, right? So we actually have H and X losing the molecules to create a double bond, okay? So that's our elimination, right? So this reaction can also have two mechanisms, such as we had SN1 and SN2, all right? So let's go ahead and see what different mechanisms we can have with elimination. So I'm talking about E1 and E2. So for elimination, what we need, we need a carbon with a leaving group. Remember, X is our leaving group. So X can be a chlorine, a bromine, iodine, OH2+, plus, and OTS. Remember, these are the leaving groups we have. All right. And the carbon that has a leaving group, we actually call that as alpha carbon. All right. And the carbon which is adjacent to alpha is beta. Okay. Remember, elimination is happening between the two carbons. right? So we have alpha carbon and beta carbon. So alpha carbon with a leaving group and beta carbon with one hydrogen. All right. So these are the basic conditions we need for elimination. All right. So a base, base can be a strong base. What is a strong base? Anything which has electron pair or a negative charge. All right. So negative charge is a strong base and electron pair is a weak base. And in a product, you create a double bond between alpha and beta. So in this reaction, we are focused on these two carbons, alpha and beta. Okay. So what is alpha carbon again? Alpha carbon is where the leaving group is attached to, and beta carbon is where the hydrogen is attached to. Okay. And alpha and beta are connected together. They are next to each other. Okay. You also need a base, and in the product, you create a double bond between alpha and beta. All right. So. <clears throat> So these are the basic conditions you need for elimination. So elimination doesn't happen with every alkyl halide, okay, or any carbon. It has to be alpha and beta carbon, okay, with one hydrogen and a leaving group, all right? So if you want, we can actually write down the conditions we need for elimination, right? So here's a list, okay? So we need alpha carbon with a leaving group. beta carbon with at least one hydrogen and on the product side you also need a base for sure so we need a base so these are the three conditions we need and on the product you create a double bond between alpha and beta so in product as a double bond between alpha and beta. All right. So there are two mechanisms for this reaction. Okay, so there are two paths this reaction can take place. Same way like we have SN1 and SN2. All right, so we also have E1 and E2. So I will write down the mechanism, and let's see, we'll discuss it later, which one is which. Right. So we start with the base. Right. So base's job is to always go and pick up a hydrogen. Right. So base will go and pick up a hydrogen. So that's where we start. Okay. Now there are too many arrows here, so you have to pay attention how do we go about and how do we write these curved arrows. Right. So base will go pick up the hydrogen, and this bond will flip between alpha and beta. Okay. So you have to switch that double bond between alpha and beta. So we're going to, we can create a double bond, and the leaving group will leave at the same time. All right. So starting with the base, it picks up a proton. At the same time, this bond will move, flip between alpha and beta, and at the same time, leaving group will leave. All right. 
So what you get from this then, you get a double bond between alpha and beta. That's our expected product, all right? You also have the Hb because your base will go pick up a hydrogen and you also have the X minus, all right? Since these two are the byproducts, we actually don't have to wipe them every time. Okay, we ignore byproducts, all right? So this is one way it can happen, okay? So base can go pick up a proton, flip the double bond and leaving group leave at the same time. So the whole thing is happening in one step at one time, all right? So what will the other mechanism then? In the second case, leaving group will leave at the first place. All right. And when the leaving group will leave, that will create a positive charge. Okay, so it sounds a little familiar to you. Okay, so when you have a formation of a carbocation, okay, so you have a formation of a carbocation. All right, so leaving group will leave in, in a step one, and step two, base comes in and picks up the hydrogen. And then that bond flips between alpha and beta to get you the required product. All right, so you have alpha and beta. And it's minor. So product side is the same in both the cases. What's the difference here is how the reaction is taking place. All right, so is it happening in one step? Okay, at the same time, or it's happening stepwise. So here, step one is leaving group will leave, that will create a carbocation, and then the base will go and pick up a hydrogen, and that will create a double bond of alpha beta, right? So here, in the step one, I guess the first case, you have everything happening in one step, right? And that's why we call it as E2. Why this is E2? Because there are two molecules playing the role. It's a bimolecular. So elimination, bimolecular, because we have a base and your alkyl halide. Both the molecules are involved in step one. That's why this is E2. In this case, in step one, there's only one molecule involved, which is alkyl halide, and that's why we call this as E1 mechanism. So you can, if you compare with SN2 and SN1, right, this is very similar, okay? In, ca in case of SN2, we have everything happening in one step, okay? And same way we compare with SN1, then we have leaving group will leave, that will create a carbocation. So this is a common, term that's what we use between E1 and SN1. So they go kind of hand in hand. If you know SN1, SN2, you kind of correlate E1 and E2 with that. All right, so let's take a real example. Now, we, whatever we did so far was general. Let's try to make it more specific, right? So let's take a simple example here. So we have, let's say, an alkyl halide. In this case, I'll try to be more specific. We have a base, which is NaOH, all right? So the first thing first, can we do elimination with this? All right, so do we have the basic conditions needed? Okay. So what we need, we need alpha carbon with a leaving group, so highlight alpha, okay? If you see alpha carbon, let's write it down. Okay, we got alpha. And then you should have a beat beta carbon with a hydrogen, at least one hydrogen, okay? So we have two hydrogens here, we just need one. So just write down the one you need, all right? So we got the alpha carbon with a leaving group and beta carbon with a hydrogen. Again, what is alpha and what is beta? Alpha carbon is that has the, the one that has the leaving group on it, and beta carbon is which is directly attached to alpha, all right? And we need a base, okay? So we have all the conditions needed for elimination. The question is now, which way to go? E1 or E2, okay? And for that, we have to refer to a chart, okay? And the chart is, <clears throat> okay, so you can have primary carbon, you can have a secondary carbon, or you could have a tertiary carbon, all right? So this is primary, this is secondary, and this is tertiary, all right? And you can also have base, which is going to be a strong base. So strong base is a negative charge and weak base is just the electron pair. All right. So strong base always does E2. So no matter what the conditions are, no matter what kind of carbon you have, it always does E2. All right. And a weak base also does E2 in case of primary 
also does E2 in case of secondary. The only he, only exception is the tertiary. So when you have a V and tertiary, this combination is the only one combination that undergoes E1 mechanism. All right, so this chart is a lot easier to, to remember. Okay, instead of remembering the whole thing, I would remember just, I would recommend just remember these two. So if you have a tertiary carbon and a weak base, that will undergo E1 mechanism. All right, so what, which mechanism to follow in this case then? Okay, so we have a primary carbon, okay, and a strong base. So primary carbon and a strong base, that will be E2. So what happens in E2 mechanism then? Okay, let's keep that aside. So what happens in E2 mechanism then? Yeah. So base will go pick up the hydrogen. Okay. That hydrogen will, okay. the, the bond will flip between alpha and beta and at the same time, leaving group will leave. All right. So what you will get from here then, you have your alpha and beta, so let's write down alpha and beta. Okay, so that's your alpha and beta. And in your product, you should have a double bond between alpha and beta. So if you want to highlight those carbons, you can put them as dots. Okay, so you can carry forward those carbons further. Right. You have H and OH as your conjugate acid and Br minus as your byproduct. Okay, but you don't really have to write the byproducts. This is your real product. Okay, so remember, in case of elimination, you always have a double bond between alpha and beta carbon. So in the previous example, we saw that if you have a leaving group, that's your alpha carbon, beta carbon, and we have a base, right, it's a strong base, right? So we create a double bond between alpha and beta. Okay, that's your alpha carbon, that's your beta carbon, right? So alpha and beta. So for now, we will highlight those carbons as alpha and beta. Later on, we might get rid of them, okay? Because that's just for your keeping track of which carbon to put a double bond in between. All right. So in this case, we have alpha and beta. Okay. What if we have two beta carbons? Right. So if I modify the same example here, right. So again, this is your alpha carbon right here. Right. And this carbon is not same as this carbon. Okay. But they both are betas. Why is beta? Because directly attached to alpha. So what I'll do then in this case, I will put this as beta one and beta two, just to discriminate between those two carbons, right? So we have alpha and beta, beta one and beta two, all right? And then I will throw a base in here, okay? So again, first thing first, can we do elimination with this, all right? So we have alpha carbon with a leaving group, beta carbon with at least one hydrogen. So do we have a hydrogen on beta carbon? Yes, we have a hydrogen on beta carbon. And same is true for this carbon as well. We have hydrogen on each carbon, right? So we can do elimination. We also have a base. All right? So a strong base always does E2. So we're going to be doing E2 mechanism, right? So now mechanism is not really important because we already did that okay, in, the, in, the, in the last example. All right? So the best way to find the product, on the product side, you should have a double bond between alpha and beta, right? So that's what we did in, in this case. So you can quickly go ahead and write the product, right? So if I choose beta one, right? So if I choose beta one, then there should be a double bond between alpha and beta, right? So let's do one at a time, right? So we have alpha and beta one. So we create a double bond between alpha and beta one, right? And then you should have another product where you have alpha and beta two. So beta one and beta two, all right? So what I'm trying to tell you here is number of betas will decide how many products you get. One beta, one product. If you have two different betas, you should have two different products, all right? So the problem here then, when you have more than one product in a reaction, then you have to identify, all right, which is the major and which is the minor product. Right? And to find the major and minor, we actually have to follow a rule here, and that's called ZZF rule. So it's a very simple rule. All you just need to do is count hydrogens. Okay, so the rule is less hydrogens across double bond. All right. Measure the product. All 
All right. So how can we apply the this rule on this product here? So let's identify those those two carbons, right? So we have alpha and beta carbons here. All right. So across double bond, across double bond means we are looking at these two carbons, right? So how many hydrogens we have across these two carbons? Right? So don't forget there's a hydrogen here, and there are two hydrogens on this, right? And how many hydrogens we have on these carbons here? So this is your alpha and beta now. Right, so alpha and beta too, sorry. So we have a hydrogen and we have a hydrogen, right? So count how many total hydrogens we have here, right? So we have three hydrogens here and we have two hydrogens here. So then which will be a major product? That should be a major product. Less hydrogens makes it a major and that should be a minor product, right? So always remember in case if you have more than one product, then you always have to highlight which is the major and which is the minor product. And for that, you have to follow the rule. Less hydrogens across double bond. Okay, double bond is your alkene. Okay, major the product. So let's take another example. So we have a ring now. And we'll still have, let's say we just use the base. Okay, we'll stick to one base for now. So, can we do elimination again? The first thing always. So, we have alpha carbon with a leaving group, and then we have two betas in this case. Right? So, that's your beta carbon right here. Okay? But this beta carbon is actually the same with, as that beta. Right? So, these two are the same. Why is the same? Because there's no difference. Right? So, no matter how far you go, they are the same. So, in this case, actually, we don't have two betas, we only have one beta. So, in this case, we only get one product. Again, why we can only get one product? Because these two betas are the same. Right. So let's create a double bond between alpha and beta. All right. What if you choose this beta right here? In that case, you will have this product. And is there any difference between these two? No, they are the same. That's why I said either you choose this beta or this beta, you will still get the same product because those two are the same betas. Right. But if I modify that example, if I put a CH3 here, okay, if I keep it same. All right. <clears throat> so we have alpha carbon, right? And then we have beta one and beta two in this case. All right? Because this carbon is not the same as this. All right? Does that make sense? So in this case, you should have two products, which will be beta one and beta two. So, so we should have a double bond between the alpha and beta, so that with beta 1, and we should have a double bond with beta 2. All right. So this should be your major product in this case, because we only have one hydrogen, and here we have two hydrogens. So less hydrogens makes it more stable, and that will be major N, that is your minor product. So let's do one example with E1 mechanism. Right. So for E1, let's say we have right, and we have water instead of NaOH. Right. So this is your tertiary carbon and this is your weak base. So tertiary and weak, that is E1 mechanism. Right. So what happens in E1 mechanism? Okay, let's break it down further. The leaving group will leave, and that will create a carbocation. All right, and then the base will go and pick up the hydrogen. Right. So in this case, we have the alpha carbon, which is your alpha carbon right here, and then you have three betas. Right. So beta, beta, and beta. But there's no difference between this beta, this beta, and this beta because they're all the CH3s. They're all the same. Right. So in this case, you can choose any one. Right, because they're all the same betas. So I will choose this. So the next step, base will go, pick up the hydrogen, okay, and that will leave the electron pair between alpha and beta. So the double one will flip, and that will get you your alkene as your product. And you'll have, that's your conjugate acid. Right, so that should be your alpha and beta. So what we can do now is we actually did all the examples. Okay. 
we have we did E1 mechanism, we did E2, we did some examples with E2 and one example with E1. So maybe we are ready to do some more examples. What I'll do for now is I'll write down some examples and let you work it out so you can pause the video in between and then work it out and then you can turn back on so you can see your answers. All right. But before we move on, I just want to highlight one thing that what are the types of strong bases? So a strong base is anything which has a negative charge. Right? So some of the examples we just saw, like NaOH, like Na plus <coughs> OH minus, so we can have KOH, like a K plus OH minus. We also have something like this, NaOET. Okay, so you have Na plus and OET minus, same as NaOH. Right? Then we also have NaNH2. So NaOET is NaOCH2CH3. So ET stands for ethyl group. So we have that's an NaOT. And we also have one more strong base, and that is called potassium third butoxide. So potassium O tertiary butoxide. All right. So potassium terbutoxide is a little bit different kind of base compared to these. All right. <clears throat> so in this case, we have NaOH. In this case, we have potassium attached to oxygen, which is attached to a tertiary butyl group. So what is a tertiary butyl group here? So we have a carbon attached to three CH3s. So potassium terbutoxide, this is a bulky base. Okay, why it's important? We'll, we'll do some examples with this, but keep in mind, these are normal bases. And potassium terbutoxide is a bulky base. And how it's going to change the story, we'll see later on. But for now, just make a list of these. And you also have this in your notes, so you don't actually have to write it. And we also have weak bases. So what are the examples of weak bases? We can have H2O, NH3, right? So basically electron pair on nitrogen and oxygen, those are our weak bases, right? All right, so I'll write down some examples for you now and you can work it out and then we'll discuss the answers, all right? So let's start with simple example first, all right? <clears throat> we'll keep the base same just to make sure we don't avoid just we don't get confused so we have <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and give a try. Okay, try to work on these three examples. And you can pause the video now, and then afterwards I'll discuss the answers. All right. So in this case, we have alpha carbon, and how many betas we have? We only have one beta. Okay, it's very important you identify your alpha and beta. Okay, and you also need a hydrogen on beta carbon, so we have one hydrogen. That means we can do elimination with this. And in your product, okay, you will have a double bond between alpha and beta. So again, go ahead and identify your alpha and beta carbon, and you create a double bond. Okay, and that should be E2 mechanism because you have a strong base. Okay, so in all these cases, you have a strong base, so that should be E2 mechanism. All right, got it. All right. <clears throat> in this case, you have alpha carbon and beta carbon, all right? And beta carbon had at least one hydrogen, so we can definitely do the <clears throat> elimination with this, right? So you'll have a double bond between alpha and beta. So you highlight those two carbons, alpha and beta, and create a double bond, all right? In this case, how many betas you have? Okay. So you have your alpha right here, 
and then we have a beta 1 and beta 2. This beta is same as this because those two groups are the same. Uh, so let's say this is your beta 1 with one hydrogen and this is beta 2 with at least one hydrogen. So both betas are eligible for elimination. Right? In this case, <coughs> right, you should have two products. So, so this is your alpha and that's beta. So if I choose beta 1, then you should have a double bond between alpha and beta 1. And if I choose beta 2, then I should have a double bond between alpha and beta 2. So this is your alpha and this is your beta 2. Okay. Remember, number of betas will tell you how many products you should have. So you have two betas, you get two products. Okay. And when you have more than one product, then you go after major and minor. So this has one hydrogen across double bond. This has two hydrogens. So this should be your major product. All right, got it. Okay, cool. So th these are these are not the only examples we'll do. What I'll do is once I, once I'm done with this lecture, I will post a bunch of uh, worksheets so you can give a try, and I can also post the answer keys online. So if you need help with that. So in next example, we will do a comparison. All right. So remember what I said before is we have normal base, which is let's say NaOH. And we have a bulky base. A bulky base is potassium terbutoxide. Okay, that's the only one bulky base we have. So anytime you see a potassium terbutoxide, just be a little extra careful. All right. <clears throat> so let's let's do the normal elimination, right? So we have alpha carbon, and then we have beta one and beta two. We already did this example before, so you kind of know already how many products to expect. So we should have two products because we have two betas. Right. So this is your alpha and beta 1, and this is alpha and beta 2. All right, so we should have two products, and in this case, this should be major product. All right. <clears throat> so in case of potassium terbutoxide, you also have the same number of products. Right. So we have alpha and beta 1, and alpha and beta 2 because you have two two betas you should have two products the only difference here is since it's a bulky base bulky base cannot go and take away the proton which is inside the molecule right so if you have these two carbons right here okay so bulky base bulky base that means it's hard for a bulky base to pick up this harden because that's kind of trapped inside the molecule. But for a bulky base, it is easier to pick up a proton which is outside. Okay, do you see the difference between these two hardens? This kind of trapped within the molecule, but this is on the on the outside. So for it's easier for a bulky base to go and pick up a hydrogen which is on the outside. Okay, so in this case, what happens then, since it's easier to pick up this proton, okay, this becomes a major product because majority of the product will come from beta one. So this is your beta one and beta two. And you'll have your beta 2 product as well because both products are possible, but that will be your minor product. All right. So, in other words, what I'm trying to tell you here is anytime you see a bulky base, you switch your products. Okay. Your major will become minor, and minor will become your major product. Okay. So, this is according to ZZ. So, we follow ZZ rule here. Okay. We follow the rule. Okay. But in case of potassium terbutoxide, we go in a reverse order. So we reverse the rule. Okay. So we also can call it as anti-ZZ. Okay. That's the only new thing which a bulky base brings in, and you just have to keep that in mind. Okay. Everything else has to go according to the ZZ rule, except a bulky base. So when you have stereochemistry. When you have stereochemistry given to you, how do you handle elimination, right? So stereochemistry of E1 and E2 reactions. All right, so luckily in this case, we don't have to assign R and S configuration, okay? Because we create a double bond in the product and we lose it, all right? So this is the best example. Let's start with, 
with a very simple example right so in this case what i'll do is i will i will tell you that bromine the leaving group is above the plane all right and if bromine is above the plane then how do you handle the situation right and we just keep our base same right so a strong base has to do e2 all right so this is your alpha carbon and then we have two betas okay so two betas have the two hydrogens right but since we are talking about stereochemistry, let's highlight those hydrogens. So the hydrogen should be one above and one below the plane. Right? And same is true here. So that hydrogen should be one above and one below the plane. Okay. So in case of elimination, when you have the stereochemistry given to you, what I'm trying to say is when you have up and down given to you, in that case, you have to follow a simple rule. And the rule is the leaving group and the hydrogen. Okay, so leaving group and the hydrogen or alpha carbon and beta carbon, they should be anti to each other. Okay. So they must be anti. So what's the meaning of anti? One up and one down. All right. So in this case, we have your alpha carbon right there and we have beta carbon. And beta carbon has a hydrogen, right? Well, two has two hydrogens. There's a hydrogen here and there's a hydrogen here. But for elimination, we can only use this hydrogen right here. Why? Because that is anti to the leaving group. Remember, we want anti. Hydrogen which is on the same side, we cannot use that for elimination. The only hydrogen we can use is anti. Okay? And or, or we can use this hydrogen here. But we cannot use these two because they're on the same plane. Okay? So if one is up, other one has to be down. Okay? So in this case, you will have your product and that will be this so you see alpha and beta all right so this is something what you don't really have to worry about is to carry forward the stereochemistry because once you have the double bond then you actually don't have a stereogenic carbon or you don't have up and down bonds so you don't have to worry about r and s in this case all right so let's do one more example all right so we have let's say bromine up here CH3. All right. So strong base will do E2. <clears throat> All right. So we have alpha carbon with a leaving group. Right. How many betas we have now? So this carbon is not same as this. Right. So we have two beta carbons. Right. So beta 1 and beta 2. So let's write down beta 1 and beta 2. All right. So beta 1 has a hydrogen which is above the plane and beta 2 has two hydrogens above the plane and below the plane all right so even though have even though we have a hydrogen on each betas not not every beta carbon is eligible for elimination and why it's not because this hydrogen right here is on the same plane as the leaving group they're on the same side. So this hydrogen cannot do elimination. Okay. We can only use this hydrogen okay, because that is anti to the leaving group. Anti means one up, one down. Okay. Or it can be other way around. Okay. We can have bromine down and this hydrogen has to be up then. Okay. The, only, the only thing is they cannot be on the same side. Okay. So we cannot use this hydrogen. The only hydrogen we can use for elimination is this. So we have to write our product then. So we have alpha and beta 2, so there should be double bond between those two carbons, right? So alpha and beta 2. And the CH3 will stay the way it is because we haven't done anything with that. Okay. So the CH3 will stay the same. So we have to keep the stereochemistry the, 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 way we, the, the, the way it is because we haven't done the reaction on that beta carbon. The reaction only occurred on beta 2. So beta 1 will stay the way it is. Okay. So in this case, we don't have two products, even though we have two betas. The reason behind that, because this beta has a hardened, but that is on the same side, so it is not eligible for elimination. So we only get one product in this case. All right, so last part of this chapter is double elimination. All right, so the name itself tells you that we are doing elimination twice, okay, two times. And when you do want to do two times elimination, that means we need to have two leaving groups. 
right? So let's have an example like this. All right, so we can have two leaving groups on the same carbon like this. All right, or we could have two leaving groups on the two adjacent carbons. So we can have two carbons on the same, sorry, two, two leaving groups on the same carbon and two leaving groups on the adjacent carbon, right? So when you have this situation, this is called as geminal dihalides. On the same carbon, two halogens, geminal dihalides. <clears throat> and when you have two leaving groups or two halogens, on the adjacent carbon, this is called as vicinal dihalide. All right, but they both have the leaving groups, right? Two leaving groups, so they both are eligible for elimination, right? So then this will be your alpha carbon and this will be your beta carbon, right? We only have one beta. This beta is there, but there's no hydrogen on that beta. So we cannot use that for elimination, okay? So we only have one beta. This beta is not eligible. So double elimination basically is you're just doing the elimination twice. Okay, so do the elimination one time and then do the elimination again. So if I throw a base here, right, a strong base will again do E2, right? So we create a double bond between alpha and beta. So let's do one at a time, right? So if I do one elimination, right? So I will create a double bond between alpha and beta and so we used up one leaving group and one hydrogen, okay? But don't forget, we still have two hydrogens left here, right? Because this carbon has three hydrogens. Because that's a CH3 carbon, all right? So we used up one hydrogen and one, one leaving group, but we still have one leaving group and one, two hydrogens left. So we can actually use one hydrogen and the leaving group to do one more elimination, right? And that's why we call this as double elimination. In this case, we already have a double bond and we create one more double bond here. So that will become a triple bond, right? So one double bond is already there. Then you create a one more that will become triple. Right? In this case, you can do the same thing. We're doing E2 mechanism, right? So we can highlight one alpha at one time, right? So if this becomes my alpha, then this becomes my beta. So even though it has a leaving group on it, I'm not referring to this leaving group here. I'm referring to this carbon right here. So if this carbon has a leaving group, that means this will become beta, right? And this has one hydrogen, right? So we can do elimination and we can create a double bond. Right. So I can create a double bond here. Remember we use this hydrogen and this leaving group right here. This leaving group is still there, all right? Now, when we want to do second elimination, all right, we, this will become your alpha carbon and this will become your beta carbon. And we still have one hydrogen left here. So we can use these two hydrogen and leaving group to create a double bond, okay? So they will have a double bond between alpha and beta now. So you already have one. That means you'll have a triple bond. So what I'm trying to tell you in, in other words, that whenever you do double elimination, you always have a triple bond or alkyne as your product okay, in both the cases. So anytime you do double elimination, okay, you have alkyne as your product. Okay? And since we are doing elimination two times, then you need base, you need two equivalents of base two times, right? So first time we use we use it for one elimination and the second time we use for second elimination. That's why we need two equivalents, two times base. Okay, same is true for here. So we need two equivalents of base.